we start our evening with young Dominic Holtam, editor of so many shooting titles these days, many refer to him simply as Chief. But this sitting bull doesn't hold out much faith in bagging a fallow on Andy's deer ridden farm. Well, not really. I think luck is normally top of my list of feelings whenever you turn up with a camera. Um, tired resignation. Um, frustration, wasted time, that kind of, that kind of thing. The, yeah. There are deer about and they've not been hammered so far. Um, we're only a couple of days into the season. The only slight negative to that is that although the weather's great, it's very windy. Um, and it's whether or not I, we can get the wind in our favour if we see them or whether it just keeps them in the wood a bit. Um, but you don't know if you don't try. Uh, and it's been the first time you've been able to lure me out um, for, a, for a crack at the fallow this year, so we'll, uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. As it turns out, Dom is right. We spend a lovely evening wandering around the countryside, but a very strong wind puts a dampener on things. Even more so when we return to base to find Messrs Crow and Lindroth looking smug, having shot two fallow bucks in the bottom oh, field. That palm, the palmation on the big one is like all that. It is full, isn't it? Yeah. You don't see deer that far um, very often. This goes to show how well they can still do if they've got oh no. the right kind of conditions. Anyway, Cray's crops are coming off and the local shoot needs a helping hand to keep on top of those pesky foxes. Right, Crow is using the heavy barrel right. Ticker T3 and 243 with Steiner Range Optics, Stalin Mod 70 grain Federal V-Shock, some polystyrene, a bit of glass and some genuine Crow's spit. We have the technology, plus a keen Swede behind the rifle. So you know how you have these beautifully handcrafted wooden yeah. tools and that's the kind of the hunting tradition for you, you know, there's, there's artistry in the fox call. Yeah. Well, it would do things slightly different in England. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Obviously, that'll work. Only good. Yeah. Only good. Yeah, perfect. Okay. But but which one do you think is best? There's only one way to find out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid that's going to be better now. But give us a give us a tinkle on your particular. Well, I broke my I broke my bird distress call here coming here, go, so here I'm kind of <laughs> I'm kind of helpless I'll here. I'll break me polish iron. But I got the. Yeah, that's a little, but it, that's more of a winter call. And then I've got the road air call. And I can always try to do a little fawn, but it may work. Otherwise, we'll just have to. Ah. That'd be. That'd be. Third option. Third option. <laughs> <laughs> Have you dried out a bit today? This, this, <laughs> this is a big rabbit. <laughs> this is a small rabbit. Oh, that's oh, a good one. Yeah. Thank, thank can you do a mouse? I can do a mouse. <laughs> oh. Can you play Tchaikovsky? <laughs> Now one of the beauties of international hunting regulations is that so many things are alien to the travelling hunter. Is it a fox? Ulf loves daylight fox calling in the open wilds of northern Sweden, but lamping them and shooting from vehicles is illegal back home. However, he soon gets the hang of it. Yeah, if, if it is difficult until you get used to it, I suppose. That's right, it's a bit like anything, isn't it? Once, once you've done enough of it, it, it comes a second nature, so... Yeah. But, well, you did all right on this one. Yeah. Just hoping we can find some more. We're struggling a bit tonight, and we've seen, seen quite a few foxes, but they don't seem to be wanting to play ball. There's a lot of wind tonight, and every gateway we've come in, the winds are wrong, wrong for the way we've come in. It's the only way into the field, and of course they've winded us as soon as we've come in, and off they've gone. Um, Andy, do you find that the foxes are generally a bit more flighty when it's windy? When it is a bit windy, yeah, they are. They're, they're, they're on edge. They seem to be on edge. You go out on a still night and 
they squeak in a lot easier, a lot better, and uh, they sit a lot better. And, but tonight, every, everything we've seen has been on its toes, and as if we've been out lamping them. We certainly haven't been out lamping them, so because if we had been out lamping them, they'd been like this one, dead. So, but, yeah. Well, next time, should we give um, Wolf and I a chance to do his hair call then, if we see one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. One yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. The polystyrene sounds pretty good. Yeah. What well, is? It's, it's gonna be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. It's good. How many foxes do you take out a year, would you say? Not that many. 20, 20 to 30, probably. But we have, uh, we've got fairly low populations, so we have to look for them further. You must do a good job of shooting them, then. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they don't have much to eat, so we don't grow so many. Ulf gets another fox, and we find out more about the Swedish way of doing things, and it involves a lot a more dog. patience. In Sweden, I could not transport the rifle on a motorized vehicle in terrain, and the field would be terrain. Right. I cannot shoot from a vehicle, I cannot use a vehicle to search for game animals, and I can't shoot with the aid of a spotlight, but I can shoot badgers all, the, <laughs> all I want. <laughs> And on badgers, I can use a flashlight. Oh, okay. Yes. So they kind of because you have to shoot them. They're substandard <laughs> over there, the badgers. Yeah, they seem to be somewhat lower on the scale. <laughs> the, their PR machine in, in Sweden is not as efficient as it is in the UK. No, 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 no. So it's that open season on film. badgers in Sweden. Crazy Scandinavians. At the end of the evening, we have four foxes, and Andy has a neat way of disposing of them. I put all the all the dead foxes, everything goes now, I don't like seeing them left about. So we're lucky enough that we've got a, a straw burner that um, we burn all the straw to do the heating on the farm. So it just gets thrown in there, end off, keeps it nice and tidy. So yeah, job's done. If you want to find out more about Ulf and his specialist fox calling, check out his DVD, Nordic Fox Calling in Sweden.